Welcome to Film Blade. In this new episode of Film Grasp, we're going to learn a technique to replace the sky of existing footage inside DaVinci Resolve in order to give our footage a more pleasing look. Let's get started. Starting from the edit page, we have imported footage on our timeline. Let's push this up and make some space here for our sky image. This will be our background sky mat, hence we place it below the footage. Select both of them and right click and hit New Fusion Clip, which will create a new fusion composition here. Our work here is done. Let's head to the Fusion page. Let it load. Now what we have here is two media in nodes, merging together and exiting to media out. These media ins are our background sky image and our foreground footage. We can also just click on one of these nodes and press 1, and Fusion will show you that particular node on its first viewer. We're going to rename the node. Hit F2, let's call this Main. And this one, Clouds. Let's make some room here. With the node main selected, hit Shift and Space to open the Select Tool menu list and type Luma Keyer. Hit Enter to add, and it will get applied on the node. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace the bright areas of the footage with that of the cloud image using luminance value. At the moment, it is replacing the darker areas, which is why we'll invert it and set the Luma range here. We'll have to play around with the values till we get some satisfying results. Setting the values too low will crunch in darker areas as well. Set it too high, and you will only be replacing the brightest points only. Since we are replacing the whole sky, we have to try and set the range accordingly. This looks fine. If we click here on this single viewer icon, we can have a better look. Now here we see some sort of mismatch in the perspective between the foreground and the background. This is because here we are seeing the upper portion of the cloud layer, but the angle at which this valley shot is taken, the lower portion of the cloud layer would match the perspective with the foreground. So with the cloud node selected, we're gonna press shift and space again, and we're gonna load the transform node. Let's push this up. This feels better. Make sure we don't push it past the horizon. Now we can try increasing the size. Play around a little. Now if we play this shot, we're noticing this cloud is not getting along well with the valley. It's not sticking along. For that to work, we need to track this shot. For the sky, since it itself is far away from the camera and the ground. The ideal points to track are those which are farthest from the camera, because they offer the least angular displacement and hence much better parallax. We're going to add a tracker node to the footage, below the Luma key. Type tracker. Load a planar tracker. Make some more room. Now we need to find the farthest point to track, which is always visible throughout the video. This part here seems like the best choice. It is farthest and ever present. So we're gonna find the right frame, turn off Luma key for a while and mark an area. But first, let's pump up the contrast so that the tracker can have some distinct areas to hold onto. Let's drop a color corrector node right after the main node and punch up some contrast. Now, select tracker node, set the tracker type to area and drop some points. This should do. Now select the motion type to translation. Since the shot is pretty stable and smooth, we'll only be needing to track it on the X and Y axis. 
make sure we have set the reference time to our current frame, where we have marked the points, which in this case is 140. And here we'll find this button, which will track this shot from this current frame to the last frame. Hit it. It can take some time. As you can see, it's picking up points and tracking its movement. I hope this cliff won't obscure our selection area. Perfect. Now let's go back to frame 140 and track the rest of it backward. From here to start. This cliff edge here could be a problem. That was close. So we have done the track pretty decently. Now we need to take this tracking data and put it into our clouds so they can stick to our main footage. So in the planar tracker, we will hit create planar transform. This will create a new node that contains all the tracking data. And we will drag this to our clouds below the transform node by pressing shift. Turn on our Luma. Now, if we play this, it should work just fine. Well, it's holding up, except for this part here at the horizon. We need to cover this opening, this gap between the sky and the ground. Just head to the transform node and pull it down a little. That's it. Since we have placed our tracking data node below the transform node, we can rearrange the position of the clouds anytime we want, and it will just stick to the footage. Let's just delete this color corrector node first. Now, here's something worth noticing. It may look like our work here is done, but if you look closely, the Luma key has removed all the bright areas in our footage from not just the sky, but also the reflection of the sky in the river below. If we toggle this switch here, which enables and disables the node, we can see it clearly. There's a quick makeshift and easy fix for it. We can just add a mirror node below in the last. Rotate it to 90 degrees, place it accordingly, preferably just below the horizon. Make sure it won't go out of the place too much. Let's play it. This is it. One might feel the need to adjust the brightness or contrast of the sky, but given the exposure of the valleys, the sky seems fine. Not much is needed at this point. Now you can go ahead and render it. Or what we can do is go to the color page and add some of our lots. Again, making some space here, hide the gallery. Here we have our shot, which we prepared in Fusion. Here is the node. Let's rename it as Base. Now we are going to do some adjustments, for which we are going to add a new node. Right click, Add Node, Add Serial, rename it as LUT. Now, loading in a fresh LUT, right-click, LUT, 16mm LUTs, which is from our 16mm Pro 4K Film Overlays Pack. We have already arranged this pack for the purpose of this tutorial. Going ahead, bonus LUTs, sedimentary LUT, and immediately you can see its warm effect. What more we could do is add another node before this one. and increase the saturation from here. 65 will be good.
Final optional step. We'll be adding grains from our 16 mm overlays pack. Make a new serial node. And then add a parallel node. For adding grains, head to the media page. Search for the 16 mm Pro grains from our overlay pack. We're going to have 16 mm ultra fine 4K and add them into the media pool as background mat. Now, back on our color page, right click on the parallel node, add mat, timeline mats, select our grain mat, which gives us our external mat. We won't be needing this data line, instead, we're gonna pipe up this mat to our parallel node, overriding the previous link. But as soon as we do this, you will get this grainy texture all over your screen. Just head to our parallel mixer and morph it into a layer mixer node. Then right click and choose a compositing mode, preferably hard light in this case. And now we have our grain layer binding our sky replace composite into a single mesh. Take a look, it's adding up to the aesthetic. Well, maybe we can reduce the grain just a touch. With the parallel node selected, go to key and change the grain output to maybe 0.75. This is it. This is how you do an advanced sky replacement. If you are serious about leveling up your post-production game, check out our high-end 16mm Pro 4K Film Grain Pack along with other premium assets at www.filmblade.com. We've attached the links in the description. Also, this video is part of our filmmaker series called Film Grasp, where we throw light on advanced post-production techniques Subscribe to level up your filmmaking game and follow us on Instagram at Filmblade to stay updated. That's it for now. Until next time.